I'm Zoo. Captain Zoo. Captain <laughs> I'm Dan. How's the stash looking? It's good. It's good. And these are our boys. Louis and Pepe. I can say he got himself out. In October 2021, we moved out of our van. And into a sailboat. But before we can see the world, we've got to clean her up. It's looking a lot better. Fix her up. <laughs> and learn to sail and navigate. So we have a big year ahead. Full of challenges, opportunities, adventures, and surprises. And that's just the beginning. It has been a whirlwind of a year. From selling most of our stuff in Bentonville, Arkansas, so we could move into a van, to spending the last six months riding and racing bikes in Missouri, Tennessee, North Carolina, Colorado, Idaho, Washington, Oregon, Montana, Utah, and California. Originally, Dan and I had planned to live on the road for quite a bit longer. But then we got to Bellingham, where there were lots and lots of sailboats. And our minds started to quickly drift toward a new plan. Half jokingly at first, and then a little less jokingly each time we looked at boats that were up for sale. Eventually, we came across enough worthwhile listings and decided Dan should go to Florida to check them out. So, right after he got done racing the last event of the Big Mountain Enduro Series in Bryan Head, Utah, we put him on a plane to Fort Pierce, where he met up with his buddy Jesse. There's a lot more of that where this came from right here. <laughs> a couple of weeks later, we were the owners of a 1988 Catalina Morgan, our new 41-foot-long floating apartment. But before we could head east to live on it, we had one last mountain bike event lined up in Monterey, California, which put us all the way across the country from Florida. Yeah. So after a few days of racing bikes at Sea Otter and playing on the steeps of Santa Cruz, Dan hopped on yet another plane, this time to Dallas for a health club industry conference with the marketing company he's still running in Bentonville. From there, he went ahead to Fort Pierce to start emptying the boat. Well, here's... What I've gotten pulled today, a bunch of bedding, giant tubs full of stuff I don't need in here. Oh yeah, the upholstery in the salon was painter's canvas duct taped to the cushions. Not sexy. Uh, here is all but one of the AC units that I pulled. Don't worry, I carefully capped everything off and mitigated any Freon loss that I could. There's another unit in there, plus a bunch of ducting and electrical. Just random stuff. Yeah, previous ownership put these plastic Walmart bins on the back of the boat for deck boxes. And you guessed it. They attempted to use silicon sealant to adhere them to the deck, which I'm sure would have definitely held up on uh, rough seas. Meanwhile, I headed to Lake Tahoe for a quick reunion with a couple college friends before my furry co-pilots and I pointed the Never Monday van east for 2,800 miles to finally see our new home for the first time. It's taken us about six days to I got to see uh, some friends. I got to ride some trails that weren't open when Dan and I left for the van life thing. So I got to do a little bit of that. We then left Wednesday morning to drive the rest of the way to, to Florida. Okay, so we have arrived at the Fort Pierce City Marina. We're gonna pop 
park and try to find Dan. <laughs> Uh, so I ended up finding Dan uh, with uh, Kerr's lights in hand uh, as soon as we got here. He was at a restaurant right at the marina. Uh, and then he took us to the boat. Uh, not something I ever thought I'd be doing, but it's actually something Dan's been thinking about for a while. Yeah, uh, I mean, I'm sort of a old school romantic when it comes to watching movies like Backdraft. Let me go, Bo. You go. We go. I think at some point in my life I thought I was going to be a firefighter and live in a derelict boat, you know, by the water. But um, that's always been a thing I've been interested in. But when I used to live in Seattle, right before I moved out of Seattle, I really came close to buying a cabin cruiser and living in the Puget Sound. It just seemed cooler to have an apartment that you could move whenever you got bored of, of where it was at. Um, I wasn't in a, in a point in my life to, to make that a reality, but we are now, and so that's why we went for it. Definitely not a derelict boat, and he's not a firefighter, but, uh, but we got the basic outline uh, going here. Uh, so we're at the Fort Pierce City Marina. We really like it here. Uh, we were actually a little bit worried we'd have to find another spot. Um, it was hard. <laughs> It was actually buying the boat, and we'll probably do more episodes where we talk about that experience. We learned a lot, and there's something to share with that. Um, buying the boat is complicated. It seems almost as complicated or more so than buying a house. Uh, the insurance was complicated. But the last really complicated thing was when we bought the boat, we thought we were assuming a lease here at this marina, which we liked, but we weren't. We were actually being kicked out in five days and in a boat that's not ready for me to just start cruising up and down the coastline. Um, so luckily I was able to plead with them and work it and they got us a 12 month liveaboard lease and really if I had, if we had our pick of the entire marina, it might be this exact spot that we're parked in right now. Um, and the amenities for it, this marina is perfect. There's a Saturday market we love. Fixing the boat, we have a lot of things to, um, you know, outfit and get it ready for our purposes. Having a West Marine that I can literally ride an electric scooter to if I need to. Um, there's a place called Marine Connection Liquidators that's a mile and a half, two miles away that has just literally two warehouses full of older boat parts that you might need. This is like the TJ Maxx of boat stuff. So yeah, we really like it here. Uh, and we found that calling around wasn't doing the trick. Uh, it really took Dan being here in person uh, to get this done. Yeah, I honestly probably called 20 different marinas and I had one sketchy deal set up 20 miles south of here to overpay for a slip that was too big for us in a less desirable spot. And really it came down to, I knew I just needed to go in person um, and that's what I do, right? And I think from the perspective of the dock master at these marinas, I think they have flexibility in what they can do. They want to be careful what kinds of people, like are they people who take care of their boat, um, know what they're doing. I did my best to convey that. I sweet talked him with the stash in person and we got the slip for the year. Yeah, and it's, it's really, uh, I'm really glad that worked out because I was having anxiety a little bit, just about moving to Florida in general. Uh, not a place I ever saw myself, but I guess I never saw myself in Arkansas either, and I ended up there and ended up loving it. Uh, there was also a, a huge change in weather for me. It was really hot here, and we both broke out. It's a really weird hives. <laughs> yeah, she says the hot weather, but it was pretty warm. It was like high 80s and humid. We broke out in hives because we both have allergies to dust and gook <laughs> and the mattress that is original with this 1988 boat. So a 30-year mattress. 30-year-old <laughs> mattress. In hindsight, uh, probably not the best idea to just start sleeping on it. Um, <laughs> I already actually had hives on my ears, my face, and my arms. And when Zoo got here, she got them worse. Yeah, I had them all over my face. I had them on my back. Uh, so it was a little bit 
stressful for the first few days. Uh, but I will say uh, the one thing that made up for it during that time was all the wildlife that's uh, around us. I think a highlight for me so far has been seeing a manatee. We're actually right next door to uh, a manatee center where you can observe manatees, but I was on the dock cleaning out some uh, drawers and I look over and there's just something floating in the water. It looks just uh, like a bunch of seaweed. Turns out it was uh, the back of a manatee just floating by our boat, just scooting around. Um, we've also seen dolphins. There you went. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. I've never seen dolphins in the wild or I don't know if I've ever seen them to be honest. And that's another one of those where you could tell Zoo is just not sure about this experience while she's scratching hives and, you know, cleaning a messy bow. And then a couple of dolphins start, you know, blow holes and, you know, swimming past us. And that's when you realize, like, we're literally, like, in a nature preserve. And that wildlife is literally on top of us, underneath us, all around us all the time. I'm, we're super stoked on that experience. Yeah, so many amazing birds. I mean, pelicans, obviously, uh, cranes. We also have a falcon that has taken a liking to our boat. He's literally on the spreaders on our mast. Like every day I can hear him scratching up there. And it's funny because I, I squawk at him and he looks down at me with these like owl falcon eyes like, huh? Obviously can tell I'm no threat and nor are the cats. And so we've got a fun relationship with the falcon. Yeah, there's also lots of different fish. It's basically a circle of life scenario every single day as bigger fish are chasing the smaller fish, knocking into the boat all day long. Um, and, you know, and speaking of the cats, uh, they're loving it, really. It's, it's a positive change for them to be on this boat. They were doing okay in the van, but you could tell they weren't thriving. Uh, they were going a little stir crazy at night. Um, we couldn't exactly just let them out in the wilderness because a lot of times in the van we weren't in the wilderness. We weren't in a, a really safe place for them. Um, the boat instantly changed all of that. The real estate below deck and above deck, it's as much as you would get in a, in a big apartment in in New York City, I think, right? If you add it all up. Oh, totally. Um, plus, we're in a gate-protected, perfectly nice marina, and so they pop off the boat and roam around on the dock, and um, it works great. I have tracking devices, I have air tags coded onto them so we can monitor them, but yeah, it's been a huge upgrade for the cats. So between just checking out this new home, we've also started on a lot of projects because this boat is in really good shape, but it also has uh, a lot of work that needs to be done before it's exactly how we want it. Yeah, I mean, anyone who knows me knows that I can be a little bit anal about how I want things to work and uh, on a sailboat that's amplified, not only because of the complexity of the systems the boat has, but the safety associated with sailing across the world, right? Um, I would say if you if you subscribe and, and, and stay along, you know, follow us along on these videos, one of the benefits will be as I break through these projects, there's going to be a combination of things that I'm actually fairly versed at between all the different types of work I've done in my 45 years of, of tinkering with things applied here on the boat. There's also going to be stuff that I'm going to be figuring out in real time as you're watching and you can sort of see how I work through those process and you can see that, yeah, we're tackling things that are sometimes over our head. We come out the other side, it works, life is good. It usually works, and if it doesn't, then we'll go back and make it work. Uh, so you can expect episodes every Wednesday. Uh, so hit the subscribe button, drop us a comment or a question, and we'll see you guys next week.